Today we have a special guest on the program. Um, we have local artist and comic aficionado, Dave Bain. Hey, thanks, Sam. Happy to be here. And today we are talking all about comics, and that's why we got you over here. So let's start at the top. And the top for me is, uh, you know, just like, I, I find it awfully coincidental that, you know, like we haven't seen any real promotion for Avengers Endgame until, what was it, a week ago the trailer dropped? Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there? Right. And that's just as all this Aquaman hype is starting to blow up. And I say that because I recall last year, Marvel kind of did a similar thing. It's It looks a lot like a middle finger from the outside, but ultimately what happened is they just they dropped Punisher the same day that Justice League hit theaters. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I don't know how much of, uh, you know, the Marvel marketing team, you know, coincides with it, with how Netflix kind of plays things out. I'm sure there's, you know, some some behind closed doors kind of stuff going on. But um, I feel like it's a lot more uh, interesting to see the length that Marvel will go to because uh, what, it, um, you know, Endgame doesn't drop for at least six months. Oh, I mean, no, no. They actually moved the uh, the date up with that last trailer. Oh, well, I'm it, sorry. Go it ahead. was going to come out in May. Now it's coming out at the end of April. Okay. So, you know, still somewhat within that timeline. But I think DC's, you know, kind of painted themselves into a corner to a certain degree in that they're shoehorning as much Aquaman stuff out there in order to try and cleanse the palate oh, of yeah. the Justice League and of yeah, Justice Batman League was Superman. bad. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll stick up for parts of Batman versus Superman, but Justice League was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we could get into the the nuances of of how bad they are. Oh, but and we, and we I probably think we will both later. agree. Yeah, they they were bad. So yeah, it, it, in order to show this kind of shinier, newer happier dc oh for that, sure that uh the press is is uh, the press releases have have really given us as much very fun colorful and yeah very colorful the palette is all there very big like new world yep yeah one that you're not used to seeing right and and one that's kind of going to leave everything that they've already built canaan wise in in the you know the dc movie uh, world behind. Yeah, you think so, they're going to be? You think they're going to be able to pull it off? I mean, it's already making a lot of money over in China. Oh no, I think I think it'll be very successful. Um, obviously, you know, Jason Momoa over the last shoot, what three years has has become iconic. Oh um, yeah, yeah, his his career has really blown up. Yeah, and uh, you know that that's got to be fantastic just as an actor. But uh, I think. Um, you know, the tongue in cheek uh, meme I saw today was the uh, the Aquaman poster. And instead of saying Aquaman, uh, it was entitled Wet Thor. <laughs> and uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that one that one uh, made me made me giggle. It, so uh, it, it does have uh, like shades of Ragnarok in, in terms of like tone and feel. Sure, like yeah. I could see that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I think oftentimes when we we look at these uh, comic book movies, um, you know, the first installment always has to deal with the origin and how you can make that effective and tell a story within it as right. opposed to just you got to set your guy up you can't yeah. just mm -hmm. unless it's spider-man and we've seen it done twice right the so in a in a kind of 180 degree turn dc is has kind of changed things by giving us aquaman now this will be the third time they give us aquaman well, you get Without, you, only, you only get a glimpse in a BVS, right. and even in the Ultimate Edition, which uh, which I, I, it's a much better cut of the movie. But even in that, it has that meta human scene, which is just shoehorned in and terrible. And oh serves, shit! Serves no purpose yeah. other than to just establish that hey, we have a whole universe that we're building. Guys, get right. excited! Well, and, I just yeah, I mean within that, and then one know, of those movies was Justice League, right? Well, <laughs> you know, and and I mean that's uh, got its own repercussions as well but it, i mean it's really nice for lex luthor to give everybody a logo yeah. so when uh yeah. when, when bruce can find Whatever the file. His graphics department is. yeah 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 he, he hires the all the best guys all the best guys um everybody says <laughs> and then there's this uh, there's this kind of these weird moments in uh you know when bruce discovers aquaman and and uh that kind of thing where they make it seem like he's you know uh, trapped in the the you know the tundra of uh, whatever this this you know kind <laughs> no of pun Norwegian yeah this Norwegian uh, country and uh, you know goes from 
you know, on a, on a, a, a G6 to having a full beard while searching, you know, the, the country oh, yeah. for this guy. Oh, I, oh yeah, yeah. And that's but that's another point is like there's a lot of there's a lot of a, a lot about that movie that just doesn't work. <laughs> but but using that carrying it into Aquaman is the third time we're gonna see Jason Momoa on the screen as Aquaman. Like, do you think that any of that negativity from the past movie? Do you think it, from, from the marketing? I think that we're good. Like, it, it looks like a fresh take. Do mm-hmm. you think any of that negativity is going to carry over at all, or do you think it's going to be able to just do what it does regardless? Well, I, I think you're going to lo- always lose, you know, a percentage of, you know, this this fan demographic that that uh, you know falls into a, a smaller demographic of of the comic book of people and, and the comic book fandom and and, and things like that. But you know, again, to uh, the momentum behind Momoa and you know his Game of Thrones appearances and and things like that. Is, oh yeah, he was well, a very popular character from Game of Thrones. Right. Well, the, far the trackier, fun to watch. Right. And, and I think those things will far outweigh a couple of angry guys that are like, well, I'm just giving up on on you know the DC Boycott universe. The DCEU. Right. Right. I, if I, that's a thing. Right. And you know, as a as a comic book fan, I I always want characters to do well right you know i always want companies to do well like right. i didn't want a bad batman versus superman movie because i like marvel movies better yeah we didn't no. want we didn't want a bad Catwoman, Catwoman movie oh, <laughs> right Catwoman. Catwoman. Yeah. yeah you know what i'm talking about oh yeah we, we, we didn't want that to be bad we wanted no. it to be good no how i mean yeah you throw halle berry and sharon stone in their prime perhaps oh, yeah. on, on the screen uh, you don't think you're gonna get something bad yeah it it was, it's like how do you how do you not win right but they they did but but uh, uh furthermore like I think you're right. I think that enough people out there, it's kind of like it's kind of like you know, just sure this your, your buddy like he he did something rotten to you, but he's your buddy, and you mm-hmm. want to you want to forgive him. And if yeah. he's and, and if he's turning over a new leaf with Aquaman, you want to you want to welcome him back with open arms. Sure. And I, I think that it definitely is that kind of an issue. But how about like because not only does DCEU look look like it's brightening up, because I mean after that you got Shazam, which looks totally different from anything else that they've done. And then yes. you got the sequel to Wonder Woman, which up to right now has been the most well-received thing that they've put out. Which is, I mean, again, in my humble opinion, a second watching of Wonder Woman left me not as excited about how people perceived it and mm. how good they think it is because I don't know if it's good. Well, I mean, like, I, I do think that movie's good. I enjoy the movie whenever I watch it, but the the asterisk that I always attach to that is that it has the uh, the problem that a lot of super a lot of super mov- su- superhero movies have this problem. Um, it's when they get to the third act, there's just, like, the big CGI boss fight. Sure. And Deadpool 2 kind of points a finger at that and, you know, right. just, just calls it what it is and makes a joke out of it, which what? I don't know if that forgives it for doing it. But... That's it's a common problem. Like yeah. you kind of have to learn to look past it. Like Black Panther has the same problem. Yeah. Well, and it, also a good movie. Very in, good movie. In Wonder Woman, in particular, like you know, after the second and third viewing, her ability to do something in one scene seems like it. It's impossible in in the next scene. Mm-hmm. And you know, she's hurtling from building to building, and you know, stopping all these these things. And of course, they want you know, these higher ranking villains to, to put the character and the hero in distress so you can, you know, feel that sensation of, oh, is she going to win? Well, yeah, yeah. you know, in the back of your head, you always know she is. I mean, but, we know how the story is going to go. Right. And I've said this before, and, and, you know, not that I'm shitting on Wonder Woman, but um, I've seen that movie before, and it was uh, Steve Rogers. And I, I, I already... That's specifically why they said it in World War One instead of World War Two, <laughs> because I, I've seen this film before. I, I mean, if I if I recall correctly, it's mm-hmm. uh, her her canon is actually World War Two. That's yeah, whenever that course. that story happens. Speaking of adaptations, right? And um, and yeah, they made it World War One because they wanted to differentiate it from Captain America: The First Avenger. And I'm not that sure that's good enough. Yeah, but I mean, I, but I mean, you know, we can agree to disagree. I still enjoyed it. Um, does yeah. that does that like hinder any kind of hype you might have had for Wonder Woman 1984 being a thing? To a degree, because I, I, Patty I Jenkins is coming back to do that one too. I, right. I mean, well, it, actually, they've like already came back. They're doing it now. Is there is there a reason we need to do period pieces with these characters? Uh, just to flesh out the backstory, because she's been around for X amount of time, so it's just like explaining what she's been doing to a degree, which is completely and terribly difficult to do when you look back at, at Batman vs Superman and how 
you know, baffling it is that no one recognizes this woman. Like this secret picture is the only thing that ever exists. Right. And and you know, in in the, even in the day and age of World War One, you could tell me a story about you know. Not my guess. Hans Schnitzel that that killed you know fifty guys or something like that. Like no, like. No, you know, no, I, I I agree with what you're saying, but I but I think that like they're just taking as many steps away from that as they can. Like I think that's kind of what Aquaman's meant to do. It's like yeah, they're the same actors, but we're just gonna just kind of forget about all of that. All right, and and obviously we're, now we're with just gonna drop it. Amy Adams not coming back. Oh, it, but makes sense. Right. Like, I mean, she's a, she's an accomplished actress. Like, mm. like if she's wasting her time, then she, she right. she's better off going somewhere else and doing something that she probably cares more about. Right. And and Ben and Jim aren't coming back. So uh, and that yeah, yeah, with Ben definitely makes sense. He's another one of those guys like like as hyped as he was when he got cast. And I, as much as I like his portrayal of Batman, just you could tell like pretty much right after Batman versus Superman dropped. He was just like, I just you, I got to get out of this. What do you like about it? What do you like about I think, he, I think he plays the duality Batman. very well. Like, Do uh, you? Like with the past Batmans, I'm not even going to mention Val Kilmer and George Clooney. Uh-huh. Um, they, cause I'll, I'll get more into that later. A little, a little bit anyways. But but with Michael Keaton, I love his Batman. Don't buy his Bruce Wayne. With, uh, with, with Chris Nolan and Christian Bale, I really like his Bruce Wayne. And I'm not as into his Batman. And with, with Ben Affleck, like I believe him in both roles. I mm-hmm. believe him when he's Batman. I believe him when he's Bruce Wayne. And I appreciate that. Okay, and and I think then we're perhaps on on the you know two sides of the coin is I think any guy of that stature or whatever you put in the bat suit and be Batman, but when you want to sell me the character, it comes down to their portrayal of Bruce Wayne, and no one has done it better than Bale. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I think he was the best Bruce Wayne. Right, and I don't not as into as Batman. I, I think he is the best Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I don't like Affleck's Bruce Wayne. Well, Doesn't do enough. it for me. But fair enough. Yeah. He was also in a, he was also in some not terribly good movies. Um, I don't know. Like maybe if he had more to work with. 